Do you feel like you're too busy to work out? Give me 15 minutes and I'll prove you wrong. So this was my physique, maybe like a year, year or two ago. Um, this is when I used to spend six to seven days a week in the gym. I thought more was better, but I couldn't really get the progress I wanted. And don't get me wrong, I was going fucking hard. Like 60 minute sessions, three sets per exercise, multiple exercises per muscle group. Um, but it just wasn't really getting anywhere. And then that all changed when I started doing less. And so here I've actually started training only three times a week and for less than 30 minutes each session, one set per exercise. I've been doing this for a few months now and this is where it's gotten me. Some pretty decent results, I reckon. So in this video, I'll share how you can get absolutely jacked training for less than two hours a week. I'll share some key principles and strategies behind making the most of these quick 30 minute workouts. And I'll share the specific structure and examples of these workouts so that you can get your shit done and then spend more time enjoying other things outside of the gym. So first, let's talk about where most people get it wrong when it comes to training and just building muscle in general. So the common assumption is that more is better. More time is better, more frequency is better, more volume is better. People just think more, more, more. And they wear productivity, they wear days in the gym like it's a badge, badge of honor. The problem with this is it neglects what actually matters and it doesn't account for the true drivers of muscle growth. Things like recovery, things like progressive overload, AKA getting stronger and progressing over time, or things like intensity, AKA how close to failure are you training? Because without recovery, progressive overload, intensity, it doesn't fucking matter how many sets you do. It doesn't matter how, how many times a day, how many times a week you go to the gym. Like all of this is useless if you're not recovering, if you're not getting stronger and you're not actually stimulating the muscle. So the best thing you can do is to switch out of this old way of thinking and to try high intensity training, quick, short, sharp workouts. One of the OG founding fathers of high intensity training, Mike Mensah, Famous bodybuilder, absolute G. Um, he was one of the first pioneers of high intensity training. Famously quoted saying, training sessions must be brief, infrequent, and intense. And his approach was very extreme. So he advocated for training, of course, one set to failure each exercise, but only one to two exercises per muscle group. And his recommendation was to train once every three or four days. Personally, I think that is a bit too extreme. I think you can do a bit more than that. Um, he was actually training a bit more than that during his peak Olympia days. Um, but I can get where he's coming from. And the point remains, you can build a very impressive physique, only training one set to failure per exercise. Uh, Mike Mentor was actually the only person to ever get a perfect score in Mr. Olympia. And so it, it proves that his methods work. So one of someone that learned from Mike Mentor was actually Dorian Yates. Dorian Yates, Dorian Yates used to train like typical bodybuilder bro splits, high volume, um, until he met Mike Mentor and he trained with Mike Mentor. Mike Mentor showed him a high intensity workout and how to actually train with intensity going close to failure, really pushing the muscle. And Dorian Yates saw a lot of growth from that. And he took that on and he went on to become one of the greatest bodybuilders of all time. Six time consecutive Mr. Olympia. Um, one of the pioneers of modern bodybuilding really brought in that mass monster kind of look. And he says, it's not about how much you do, it's about how much you put into what you do. So he kind of took Mike Mentor's approach, one set to failure per exercise, but he added a bit more on top of it. So two to four exercises per muscle group, training four times a week. 
And so I think, like with most things in life, the best answer lies somewhere in the middle. And so I like an approach that's in between kind of what these two preach. And that's what we'll go over now. So here's my breakdown of HIT, high intensity training in a nutshell. So first we're gonna start with the fundamentals. At the core of high intensity training is the mindset. It's the way you approach your training. It needs to, you need to give 110% effort. Every session, every set, you need to approach it with an aggressive mindset as if you are going to battle with the weights. Because you only have one set each exercise to stimulate the most growth possible. And so that requires you to really fucking lock in, dial in, and give your absolute all to that singular set. That is the only way you are going to make this work. Otherwise, these short workouts aren't going to do anything for you. You need to, you need to be aggressive with it. All right, that's the first thing. Now, what do we actually do with that aggression? So you need to channel it into intensity. So intensity just means how hard you're training, how close to failure are you going? Is your muscle training to its maximum capacity? So how we do this is by training one set each exercise to positive failure. Positive failure means you train until you can't get another rep. Even if someone was pointing a gun to your head and said, give me another fucking rep or I'll shoot you in the head. That is the point where you cannot get another full rep. So let's say you're doing a set of bench press. You get like six reps. And then on the seventh rep, you get about halfway and you just absolutely cannot get another full rep. What I want you to do then is to fight at that sticking point for three to six seconds. The weight's probably not gonna move anywhere, but you're gonna be shaking tremendously. And you wanna fight that for three to six seconds. And then, lower in a slow and controlled manner until you can no longer control it. And that is one set to positive failure. And that is all you need to do for that exercise. What you can do on top of that is training beyond failure. I wouldn't recommend doing this all the time. It is very taxing, so you wanna do it sparingly. This is something you can do once in a while if you're feeling really strong, you really wanna push the muscle. But you, you don't want to do this every set, every exercise, every training session. One method of training beyond failure is to do forced reps with a partner. So back to that bench press example, let's say you're stuck on that seventh rep. You can get your partner to use a bit of force to help you get that last rep. And then you lower it back down yourself and then you try for another rep and then they can help you get it up again with a, the, as little assistance as possible. So you're doing all the work and you can bust out a few extra reps that way. That's forced reps. Another way you can go beyond failure is cheat reps. So as the name implies, it is, let's say you're doing, you can't really cheat with a bench press, but let's say you're doing barbell curls. So you're doing strict curls, you do like seven reps, and then on the last rep, you can't really get it up. So you use a bit of hips, a bit of back, a bit of legs, and like really fucking swing it up and then you lower it back down slowly. And then you swing it up and you lower it back down slowly. And you can do a few cheat reps and that will help you get beyond failure. Um, similarly with partial reps, as the name implies, let's say we're doing bench press again, you can't get that last rep. Then you would lower it back down and then you'll do maybe like a third of a rep. And then you lower it back down again, and then you, maybe next rep you'll get like a quarter rep. And then you just bust out some quarter reps, some one eighth reps until you just can't move it anymore. But again, these are very taxing. You don't want to do these all the time. Just once in a while, when you're feeling really good, you really want to push it. Next is volume. So volume, aka how many sets you do. We just wanna do one set to failure per exercise, as we've been saying. And this ties back to the mindset about giving 110% effort, being aggressive, because when you know you've only got one set per exercise, it really gets you 
fucking amped up to to give your all. As opposed to when you know when you've got like three sets of ten on bench press, like you're just not going to bring that same level of intensity, especially to the first and second set because you just know you've got another one or two sets to go. So when we have one set to failure per exercise, that really gives you permission and it gives you, it makes you really want to push it to failure and give it your all. And for each exercise, sorry, for each body part, we're only doing two to three exercises. That just gives us some variability to attack the muscle from different angles, different approaches. For example, a chest and back workout. For your chest, you can do a pressing movement, like an incline press, and then a fly movement, like a dumbbell press, just so you're hitting it differently, uh, one set each. And then, for example, for back, you do like a vertical pull, like a lat pull down, and then some horizontal pulls, like a machine row or a cable row. All one set to failure. We'll go deeper into specific workouts later, but that's just an example. Next, fun, la, next and last fundamental is progressive overload, aka getting stronger, aka adding weight to the bar over time. So you just want to add weight or reps to the to your exercises every session. So for example, with a bench press, let's say you are prescribed one set of six to ten reps. And week one, you get eight reps of 60 kilos. Then week two, you will try to get more than eight reps on that same weight. Let's say you get 10 reps. Then week three, you bump the weight up about 10%, so let's say 65 kilograms, and then you try to get six to 10 reps. And you just repeat that over and over, and you get stronger, and you get stronger, and you get bigger. Very simple, very straightforward. All right, so into workout structure, how to structure your workouts. I will show an example workout later, but this is just showing the backbone of how it works so you can play around with it um, and build something that works for you. So in terms of frequency, you just want to hit everything, every muscle once a week. The, I've found the best way to do this is to train three times a week, like we said earlier. This is the kind of the middle ground between Mensa and Yates. Mensa's approach was training once every three or four days, which is a bit too extreme. Um, Dorian Yates trained four times a week. He actually said later himself, if he was a natural, he would only train three times a week because obviously when you're taking anabolic steroids, you have enhanced recovery capabilities and training four times a week is not a problem for you. So he actually recommends three times a week. And the reason why three times a week is good is because you want at least one day a week Oh, sorry, one day of rest between your workouts because of systemic fatigue and C CNS fatigue, central nervous system fatigue. So let's say you're training chest and back on Monday. Even though you might think, oh, I didn't train legs, I can train legs the next day. That first workout fatigues your whole system. The, the whole body needs to recover from that, even though you didn't hit legs and your central nervous system takes a hit as well. These are things that get hit regardless of what you're training. So you need to take a, at least a full day off just to let your full body recover so you can come into the next workout fresh. This goes back to that fundamental principle we spoke about before of recovery. If you just keep smashing your body without letting it rest, it's not gonna grow. So an easy example of this is just Monday, Wednesday, Friday you've got at least a day off in between every workout. Warm-ups, you only really need a warm-up for your first exercise because let's say, for example, you're training chest. If I've already warmed up on a pressing movement, I don't need a warm-up on my fucking flies. Like my chest, my elbows, it's all warmed up. Otherwise, it would just be a waste of time. That's why these workouts are like 30 minutes and you can do your whole week of workouts in an hour and a half because we're not spending time on warm-ups like most people do. For your warm-ups, so your first exercise, let's say it's an incline press. Just throw 50% of your max there and do one set, six to eight reps, don't go to failure obviously. And then add some more weight, so it's 70% of your max. 
And then you do your working set to failure, and that's it. And you're done for warm ups. And then bang, move on to the next exercise. Easy. In terms of exercise selection, I will give general recommendations later, but it is important to note that everyone is different, which is why not everyone will have the best optimal exercises. Some people feel stronger in certain exercises. This is due to everyone having different limb lengths. We all have different biomechanics. So some people might really like a dumbbell press. Some people might really like a machine press. Some people might like the Smith machine. It all depends. You've got to find what feels good for you. And you also want to find what you find it easier to hit failure in. For example, I much prefer lat pull downs as opposed to pull ups because you're locked in, the half of your body is not moving. I personally just find it easier to contract and feel the back muscles and hit failure as opposed to pull ups where I have to worry about my whole body swaying. There's just more shit going on. So you gotta find what you feel strong in and what you find it easier to hit failure in regarding the targeted muscle group. Um, and lastly, just touching on technique. So you want your form to be what I like to t term controlled aggression. So as the name suggests, you want to be aggressive, like we spoke about earlier. Of course, you want to be aggressive, approach the set with an aggressive mindset. But you also want the form to be controlled. At no point should there be any swinging, jerking, or like thrusting. Except, of course, if it's intentional force reps, like we spoke about before, intentional cheat reps. So an easy way to enforce control for beginners is to count. So like a, an easy tempo is four seconds on the way up and four seconds on the way down. You don't have to do this, but for beginners, this is an easy way to enforce the fact that you are controlling the weight. As you get more intermediate and advanced, you kind of understand intuitive control and you can control the weight throughout the whole movement without counting. As you get more advanced, you can actually go faster while still being controlled. So if you look at like clips of Ronnie Coleman, for example, um, you'll see him pumping out reps and they're actually quite fast, but you can just tell he is controlling every millimeter of that movement because he's done that rep He's done that rep so many times. He's so strong, he's so dialed in, his technique's so good that although it may look fast to a beginner, there is no momentum, no swinging, no jerking on the, on the upper portion or the lowering portion. It is in control the whole time. So to sum up form and tempo, just make sure it's controlled. Counting may help if you're a beginner. All right, with, so with all that theory out of the way, um, here's an example workout that you can use. So as we spoke about earlier, it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So you've got at least one day of rest in between workouts, Monday, chest and back, Wednesday, legs, Fridays, delts, bias, triceps. So you're hitting everything once a week. Everything's getting ample recovery. Onto the exercises, Monday, chest and back. You've, like I said before, there aren't specific exercise recommendations, just movement recommendations, and then you can find what works best for you. Start off with a chest press, could be incline press, could be dumbbell press, could be machine press, whatever the fuck you want. One set, six to 10 reps, and then you move on to a fly, whatever the fly you like. And then you can do a vertical pull, lat pull down, pull up, etc., a horizontal pull, and a rear dot fly. All one set, all six to 10 reps, to failure, adding weight slash reps every session. Simple. Same thing with legs. Some form of leg press could be leg press machine, hack squat, barbell squat, whatever you want. And then leg extension, leg curl, or a Romanian deadlift, something like that. And a calf raise. All one set, all to failure, all progressive overload. And then Friday, delts, Shoulders, biceps, triceps, AKA bro day. Um, some form of vertical press, so shoulder press, military press, dumbbell press, whatever you want. Lateral raise could be dumbbells or cables. 
some form of freestanding bicep curl and then some form of preacher curl, some form of tricep push down and then dips with a bit of a closer grip, um, focusing more on the triceps and the chest, obviously. All one set, all to failure, all progressing. And then two days off. Really fucking simple. If you just do this, you train hard, you add weight slash reps every workout. All of this will take you less than two hours easily, hour and a half each week. And if you don't care about legs, skip legs. Just do fucking Monday and Friday. That's like an hour of workouts each week. And you can get pretty jacked off that. So, there is no excuse. Everyone has enough time for one hour a week. Really fucking simple. And that is it. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you.